Hi everybody, today we are going to continue our discussion on finding the zeros of polynomial functions. So um, last week we really worked with polyno polynomial functions that have a rational and real zero, so now we're going to work in the complex and imaginary realm. So it's really important to remember that conjugate pairs um, are a must, they are a requirement for zeros of polynomials. So if you have a zero that is 2i, I don't need to tell you it is implied that negative 2i is also a zero because they are complex conjugates. So you have to remember that um, those type of zeros always come in pairs, they always come with their conjugate, and just because it's not stated um, doesn't mean it's not actually a zero, it is implied. So you have to know that there is that additional zero. So here, they're asked us to create a fourth degree polynomial with real coefficients, negative 1, negative 1, and 3i. So we're going to actually do the exact opposite of what we usually do. So um, we're actually going to start with our zeros. And since we see positive 3i, we're also going to add negative 3i. And then our next step working backwards would be creating the factors. Now I'm going to put an a out front just to account for any possible stretch or shrink. However, since they're just telling us to find any uh, polynomial function that works, we're going to let a equal 1 just for simplicity. Okay, so now we've created our factors. Now all we need to do is multiply out our equation. So we get x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals x squared plus 9, right? Minus 9i squared is plus 9. And then all you have to do is FOIL that out and combine like terms, and you get x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 10x squared plus 18x plus 9. So here's the important steps we need to watch out for. Recognizing that there actually is an additional zero because of the complex conjugate, and being able to turn your zeros into factors. Remember, you just subtract the zero from x. All right, so at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, so remember we have that additional zero of positive 7i. It's, it's complex conjugate. Create your factors. We're going to set a equal to 1 for simplicity. However, you could choose an a value of whatever you want. There are an infinite amount of solutions for this problem. And then you should end up with x to the fourth plus 45x squared minus 196 when you multiply it out. Okay, so now we're going to be creating a more specific polynomial function. So same idea, they're going to give you the zeros. So 2, 1 minus i, and we know that that means 1 plus i, its conjugate pair is also um, or its complex conjugate is also zero. So let's create our factors. So we have a times x minus 2 times x minus. So remember, we're subtracting our zero. So let's group it like this. And x minus 1 plus i. So we do need to multiply this out. But um, as we're doing that, we're going to actually keep our a value because this is a more specific function. They tell us that f of 1 must be 3. So they're essentially giving us a coordinate. They're giving us the coordinate 1, 3, and we're going to temporarily substitute that just to find a. We've done this in the past with quadratics, which is just a little bit more work because we have more factors and more zeros. But let's first multiply out what we have. So if you multiply out those two trinomials in the back, you should end up with x squared minus 2x plus 2. Just make sure that you've distributed this negative out and then you just multiply everything out. Then if you multiply those out further, you get a times x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4. Now, Here's the time where we're going to substitute this. This, like I said, is giving us the coordinate 1, 3. So we're going to replace our y value with 3 and our x values with 1. So we have 1 cubed minus 4 times, I'll substitute those in in a second, 4 times 1 squared, 6 times 1, 
and negative 4. This allows us to find the appropriate A value. So if you simplify this down, you should get um, A equals negative 3. So now that we have our A value, we're going to go back and substitute it into this formula. So f of x equals negative 3 times x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4, and then we're just going to distribute it out, and we're done. So negative 3x squared plus, oops, sorry, cubed plus 12x squared minus 18x plus 12, and now we are done. So it's the same idea as the last problem, except this time we have to substitute a given value to find the appropriate A value. Then we plug it back in and distribute. All right, so go ahead and pause the video again, and please give this problem a try. Okay, so here... Once again, make sure you catch that there is an additional 0 at negative 2i. Create your factors, multiply them out, and then substitute um, your y value with 10 and your x value with negative 1, and your a value should be negative 1. So when you um, multiply it out, you get f of x equals negative x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 8. All right, so now we are going to be um, working with zeros that are complex um, numbers. So here they give us a function and they tell us that one, it, 1 plus 3i is a zero. So usually what we do when we're given a zero is we set up like synthetic division. But if you try to do synthetic division with a, com or with a complex number, it doesn't work. So we need a different method. So first of all, let's note that 1 plus 3i is a zero, but we know that another zero is one minus three i. It's conjugate. So just essentially what we're going to do, this is a very simplified version, but let's say I asked you, or we're working with the number 48, and I told you that three and four are both factors. So we could take 48 and divide it by three, and then divide it by four, or we could just take 48 and divide it by 12. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually take our two factors, multiply them together, and then we're going to divide it out of this polynomial. So if those are our zeros, then our um, factors are x minus 1 plus 3i and x minus 1 minus 3i. So let's, multi or let's first distribute that negative. Okay, and then if you multiply this out completely, you should end up with x squared minus 2x plus 10. So this is the product of these two. Since it's the product of two of our original, sorry, it's the product of these two factors. Since it's the product of two of our factors, it should also be a factor of our equation. So now, we're going to take, I'm going to erase this just to make some room. We're going to take this factor that we know exists, and we're going to divide it out using long division. So we're going to do some long division here. And here's what it looks like. So if you have done your long division properly and you've uh, multiplied out your factors, you should have a remainder of zero because they told us that 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i are zero. So this should divide out evenly. So now let's look at what we have left. What we have left is something that we can factor pretty easily. So we get x equals negative 2, positive 3, and then our givens 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i. So remember... We were given one zero, which implies the second, so we turned them into factors and multiplied them to create a larger factor, which we divided out, and then we were able to work with the remaining quadratic. So go ahead and pause the video and uh, give this problem a try.
Okay, so um, if one zero is 4i, the other zero is negative 4i, so our factors become x minus 4i and x plus 4i, which if you multiply them out, we get x squared plus 16, which is also a factor. So if you divide that out, you're left with 3x minus 2, which gives us our last zero of 2 thirds. Okay, so now uh, we're going to practice finding the linear factors of this zero. So just like we worked with last week, if we have a function and we don't know where to start, the rational root theorem is a really good starting point. So you just have to start trying different points. So I'm going to try one, and it works. We have a remainder of zero. But that uh, remaining polynomial is not factorable, so we're going to have to keep trying more numbers, but we're going to use our new um, smaller polynomial. So let's just try negative 2 and see if it works. Oh, and conveniently, negative 2 also works. Now, I, I can see the answer, so I know that those are zeros, but for you, you just have to kind of guess and check. So what we have left is x cubed minus x squared plus 4x minus 4, and this you can actually factor by grouping. which means our factors are x minus 1 from our first 0, x plus 2 from our second 0, then x minus 1 and x squared plus 4 from down here. Now this we actually can factor a little bit more. Now we won't have real numbers, but we still want to factor it out. And I'll say squared here. So x squared plus 4, if you solve for that, you would get um, plus or minus 2i. So we can actually say x plus 2i and x minus 2i. So if that's a little tricky, find the zeros first, and then you can turn them into factors. So there you have it. So at this point, I'm going to have you pause the video and give this problem a try. All right, so this one, um, if you caught it, you can actually factor this trinomial to x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 1, which you can factor further to x plus 3i, x minus 3i, x plus 1, and x minus 1. However, if you didn't, um, you can use the rational root theorem and just start testing some zeros. So if you test 1, it works, and that remaining um, polynomial you can factor by grouping. So you should end up with the same factors and the same zeros, but it can save you some time if you catch it. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is called Descartes' Rule of Signs. So this is just a way that you can find the possible number of positive real zeros and negative real zeros. So this isn't something that you necessarily have to do, but it can certainly save you a lot of time. So I want to show you how it works. So um, you first start with your function and you look at your terms. So the first thing you're going to do is count the number of times your sign changes from positive to negative as you go from term to term. So as I go from my first to second term, I go from positive to negative. So I'll go like this. Oh, and then negative to positive, so I go like this. And then one more sign change. So there were three sign changes. So that tells us that there could be three or one positive real zeros. So how um, the Descartes rule of signs works is once you count the sign changes, you just keep subtracting two and that will give you all of your possibilities. Now to find negative real zeros, you plug in negative x and see what you have. So if I plug in negative x here and you cube it, well it becomes negative. But if you square a negative, it stays the same. So this remains negative 5x squared. Here, the sign will change so to negative 6x, and my constant is always the same. So here, you notice, there are no sign changes, which tells you that there are zero negative real zeros. So essentially, this could help you narrow down um, the rational roots that you are trying um, when you're doing your synthetic division. So it's not necessary, but it can save you some time. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try really quick. Okay, so here, there are no sign changes with our original function, which means there are no positive real zeros, so don't even check them. But when you plug in negative x, there are three sign changes, so you could have three or one negative real zeros. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for watching.